So today I'm going to show you how to change your fuel injectors on a Lumina or a GM 3.1 or 3.4 engine. So these are the various tools that I used. You need an assortment of ratchets here as well as an assortment of sockets. I think that's a 10, a 13, and then possibly a 6 or a 7. Um, just get yourself a nice little set. Um, I'll leave a, li a link in the description for all these tools here. You, you need some extenders as well. Um, also, you obviously need, uh, since you're going to be down there, you might as well as change your gaskets. Here's your fuel injectors, a couple picks, um, needle nose pliers, some screwdrivers, uh, and this comes in handy to be able to hold all your bolts. You also might want some rags or some towels to stuff into the intake plenums to be able to cover up the hole so nothing gets down there. And then maybe some carb choke cleaner to be able to clean up once you're under the air intake manifold. You also don't want to forget your hand cleaner. Uh, make sure you get some of that stuff. All the links will be in the description below to where you can get this stuff. So here is my Chevy Lumina engine. Um, it's a GM 3.1. Here's the fuel injectors. We have these uh, little rings right here. You want to go, actually I think I didn't even use those. You want to go ahead and take those off. So if your fuel injectors that you bought look something like this, then they're probably going to fit. So I'm going to go through here and basically pull everything apart and show you what you need to pull apart as well as some of the tools that you might need to be able to pull off um, all of the electrical hardware, all of the uh, the intake manifold to be able to get to your fuel injectors. And if you uh, watch to the end here, uh, I saw another video that they actually had to take off the the throttle body and the intake manif or the intake uh, tubing. I actually didn't have to do that. I'll show you a little technique here that all you have to do is uh, uh, just put a little prop underneath the air intake manifold and then you should be good to go. So first off you're going to want to take off your spark plug plugs right here. You don't have to take off the back uh, three, just take off the front three. Here is your, I believe that is your uh, EGR valve. Go ahead and take that connector off because you're going to have to take the EGR valve off eventually, I think. Um, and then take that and just move them all out the way. If you want, you can zip tie them uh, just so they don't get in the way or they don't get pinched. Take off the PCV valve. Take off some more electrical connectors. Just lay them off the, to the side. And I think you get the general idea here. We're going for the intake manifold uh, plenum right here. This the 3100 SFI V6 fuel injection. Um, so then take off this. I believe that's either a PCV to the PCV system or the EVAP system. I could be wrong though. Take off that tube there. Then you have a series of bolts here. You have one, two, three, four, five, six. And then on the back here, or, and then you got the uh, pressure regulator, PCV tube. Then you have this bolt here to the alternator, 7 and 8. There's one underneath, and there's 9 right there. 10 to the distributor, 11 and 12. And then you have uh, 13 and 14 to this little uh, contraption right here. I, I'm not sure what... Uh, what this little unit is but you have two little small bolts that you have to take off and then down there you have 15 and then you have 16 and 17 for the EGR valve so let's go ahead and start taking these bolts off now that magnetic holder uh, come really comes really comes in handy when you want to uh, take all these bolts off so there goes the EGR valve take off the uh, spark plug distributor uh, housing and the entire idea is to be able to push and swing this uh, intake manifold plenum off of the top of the engine to be able to get to the fuel injectors. So there you have your six bolts on the front. And we're working on the alternator. Now here is the uh, alternator uh, was connected uh, by this pretty large bolt right here. You don't have to take this bolt all the way out. You just have to take this, uh, this uh, long metal piece holding it together. Uh, that that ratchets down on the intake manifold plenum. So there's that piece right there. And then here we go with the, and uh, I figured out this was the fuel uh, pressure regulator unit. 
just have these small bolts right here. You actually don't have to take it off the manifold. What you, uh, what we have to do is actually get to a bolt underneath. So we have to pop off this, um, this tube right here. And what it's doing is sucking air from the air intake manifold to be able to be used on the pressure regulator. Follow the tube and you see that's what it was for. So we gotta get these two bolts right there. And it looks like they're 10 millimeter bolts. There we go with one and two. And then to be able to actually push it back, um, my entire idea behind this was I did not want to have to drain the coolant. Now we have coolant lines going to the throttle body, uh, just uh, and underneath the throttle body we have uh, small little tubes, rubber tubes. And I've seen previous videos, and they actually took these tubes off and had to uh, remove some of the coolant, which I didn't want to do because I didn't know how much that would affect the uh, radiator system. So uh, this is a, a little technique that I that I did. If you watch here, you'll see how I uh, moved the intake plenum without removing the, the tubes down there. So what you want to do at this point is uh, as you move the the plenum up you want to make sure that there's not a, there's not stress on uh, some of the um, on some of the hardware down here so go ahead and remove that tube as well I think that's the evap system so you move this up and you want to prop it up with and I used a long uh, one of my long ratchet extenders I think that was a 8 inch extender so you want to look down here and make sure that uh, nothing is pinching or nothing is breaking. And we look down here, we we'll also want to make sure that we have no coolant leaking out of these lines underneath the throttle body. And it looks like we are good to go. So now that we have it propped up, looks like those uh, gaskets actually are pretty new, but we're going to go ahead and replace them since we're already under here and I believe I got Felpro gaskets. You want to be able to cover these holes up just in case you, you, you don't want to knock a bolt or knock a rubber uh, piece down here or a gasket down there just so you don't mess up your engine in the long run. You don't want to mess up your pistons or anything. So then we still have a little bit of work to go to be able to get to the fuel injectors. We have to take off the fuel pressure uh, line right here. So once you uh, unloosen the bolts, you know we start to pry it out, and I have a long screwdriver right here. Just work on it. What you're doing is trying to loosen up the rubber gaskets um, on the end of the fuel injectors, which I'll show you a picture of them here, or I'll show you a close-up of them. So once you get it popped off, make sure it well, looks like we have to relocate our prop right here for our plenum. So now here's where you get to actually changing the fuel injectors. So there's going to be three simple steps to be able to take the injector off. You have the electrical connector that you simply just press this uh, metal clip right here and then push it off. You also have this metal clip right here. Just use some needle nose pliers to be able to pull it back. And then you also have an O-ring stuck up in the, uh, the fuel line. So you have an O-ring on the bottom you see there, and then you also have an O-ring on the top. You're going to want to make sure that you get the O-ring out of the fuel line just so you don't have a double O-ring there, and then you have fuel leaking all over the place. Definitely don't want that to happen afterwards, after you change them all out. So once you have all six of them changed out here, go ahead and make sure you push down hard enough to be able to snap the... Uh, uh, the o-rings back into the top of the engine so once you push hard enough you should be able to tell that it's all the way in make sure you push put enough pressure and then put pressure on each of the six injectors to be able to push each one down there's one and then there's the other one and if you want you can clean up a little bit now one of the most difficult parts of this was actually making sure we get the gasket to stay down Now, I, uh, while you're replacing the, the intake manifold back. So they do make some 
adhesive where you can put on the bottom of the gasket and then put on the top of the, uh, the metal to be able to secure it while you are replacing everything which I didn't go that route I just I went the difficult route I guess make sure you move everything back so it looks like the easiest way to do this is rest the intake manifold on the gaskets and then guide the gaskets in with your bolts to make sure your gaskets uh, don't move anywhere so you see I have two bolts here in the front to secure the gasket in place while I am hand tightening everything else and it probably be probably would be okay to hand tighten everything and then just go back with a wrench or go back with the socket and go ahead and tighten everything back up and then go ahead and just proceed to do everything in opposite order and make sure that there's no coolant leaking as well underneath your throttle body if you want to learn how to reduce the overall cost of owning a car go ahead and visit autoodometeracademy.com if you like that video leave a like leave a comment and subscribe to Auto Odometer. And thanks for watching.